So you would like to know about the bases or substrates you need for making mosaics. Well, you're in the right place. I'm Helen Miles and I'm here to teach you all the tips and tricks you need to make mosaics. So we're going to look at seven different substrates for mosaics. Some are for indoor use and some for outdoor. Each substrate has its own properties and you use them for different purposes. Like you might choose concrete because you want to make stepping stones for the garden. This is just a little one, not a stepping stone. Or you might choose jacko board because you want a lightweight substrate that's easy to hang. This is an overview of the options available. It's not a definitive list, but it gives you an idea of some of the widely used substrates and where to find them or make them yourself. I will be looking in more detail at the substrates and when and how to use them further down the line. This is substrate number one. It's called Jacko Board, which is the manufacturer's name for tile backer and insulation board, and it's absolutely brilliant for mosaic making. It's a compressed foam board, which is made of polystyrene, cement and fibreglass. It's lightweight, waterproof, easy to cut, into any size or shape and easy to put hanging fit fittings into it and generally it's just wonderful. So here's a little practice piece I made using jacko board. You can see the board underneath and all I've done is apply a layer of tile adhesive or thin set and pushed the tesserae into the adhesive. I will talk to you about making tile adhesive mosaics in another video. Another thing that's really great about Jacko board is it's very easy to um, insert hanging fittings like this one into the board before you start working. So this is substrate number two. It is fiberglass mesh. You basically just glue the mosaic tiles onto the mesh and then you have a lightweight mosaic which can be cut into any size and has a certain amount of flexibility if you want to put it around a curved surface. Here is a little mosaic I made for, of a shoe for a friend's project and you can see what I mean. Mesh is great if you want to work directly and if you're doing large scale work and need to cut it into smaller pieces for installation or transport. Here is substrate number three. It's a homemade substrate and is very versatile and an easy to use option. Basically, you just get two layers of mesh, like I've just shown you, and cover them with two layers of tile adhesive. The same stuff as I used to cover the jacko board um, earlier. You just wait for it to dry and hey presto, you have a super versatile substrate that you can use for lots of different mosaic projects. Um, you can add a little bit of pigment to the tile adhesive and make a black substrate or any colour you choose. And the really good thing about it is that you can cut it with ordinary kitchen scissors into any shape you like. You can also um, punch holes in it very easily. So this is just a little practice piece I made on, on um, this substrate. The thing about it is if you only do two layers, it won't take very much weight. So if you want to make a less bendy and a stronger version, then you just layer up the mesh and tile adhesive until you have something more rigid. Here we have substrate number four, wood. If you decide to use a wooden substrate, you have lots of options, 
but be aware that it needs sealing before you start work and it's not your best option for outdoor use. The trouble with wood is that it expands and contracts, so if any moisture gets into it, of course that would have a potentially detrimental effect on your mosaic because the grout would crack over time. Wood is a perfectly acceptable option as long as you're going to use it indoors and as long as you prep it first. Another way to use wood is to frame it before you make the mosaic. So you basically cre create a shallow tray, the way I have here, and then apply the mosaic inside. And once you're finished, you have a flat surface with the frame flush with the mosaic. If you're going to use wood as a base, then I would recommend that you stick to marine ply like this, hardwoods or MDF. The good thing about MDF in particular is you can buy these really fun pre-cut shapes to apply mosaics to. And they come either thick, like this dolphin, or thinner, like this heart. And of course, you can get really fancy and cut interesting shapes yourself. Substrate number five is polystyrene. This is just a bit of polystyrene packaging, as I didn't have anything else to show you. But you can buy polystyrene in all sorts of great shapes, and you can get really stuck into polystyrene. Um, it gives you lots of options. You can cut it into all kinds of shapes with a hot knife or even an electric carving knife. And the only thing you have to be careful of is to not use an adhesive which contains solvents as it will dis dissolve the polystyrene. Um, you need to also be aware to look for a high grade polystyrene, not the type that you can make a hole in if you press your finger into it. Polystyrene also needs to be prepped before you add mosaic to it by wrapping that wonderful mesh that I showed you earlier and then applying a layer of tile adhesive before leaving it to dry. Once you have applied several layers, the result, as I've heard, is as hard and resilient as granite, believe it or not, and of course it has the brilliant quality of being lightweight. Substrate number six is concrete. Concrete is a great substrate for mosaics, as obviously it's weatherproof and durable and has smooth um, surfaces, which are ideal for applying tesserae to. You can either buy pre-made concrete slabs, which are sold at building suppliers or garden centres and used for paving, or you can make your own concrete slabs by mixing up concrete and pouring it into moulds. You could buy a mould, like this one, which is specially made for mosaic. This is um, just an example, and the principle is very simple. You just apply a thin layer of oil or wax to stop the concrete sticking to your mould and pour the concrete in. You then wrap it and leave it to cure, and then just unscrew these screws here and remove the battens and you have a concrete slab. Uh, another option is to make your own very basic moulds using a plastic tub or even just four battens of wood like this one which I staple gun together, pour the concrete in uh, and once you're finished, once, once the concrete is dry, you just pull out the staples and, and then you can use the battens again and again and make the mould any size you want. Obviously concrete slabs are just the tip of the iceberg. You can buy concrete shapes at garden centres from relatively simple things like this bird to a whole life-size Greek classical sculpture. That would certainly keep you busy for a while. Or you can just go wild with concrete and make all sorts of weird and wonderful substrates yourself, but maybe save that until a bit further down the line when you're a bit more comfortable 
with pouring concrete. And the last substrate is terracotta. Make sure you buy a high quality terracotta that's going to be good for outdoor use if that's where it's going to go. It will need sealing before you apply mosaic to and it's a good way to get started if you're interested in mosaicing on 3D surfaces. A simple large flat terracotta saucer like this for example can make a great little bird bath. So that's my seven top mosaic substrates. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to hear more, then please subscribe below.